Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's episode, we're joined by Dr. Aito Maestro, who is one of our new resident lecturers. Today's topic will be an introduction to asymmetric organocatalysis. Aito Maestro obtained his PhD in 2019 from the University of the Basque Country, where he worked under the supervision of Professor Francisco Palacios and Dr. Javier Vicario on the asymmetric synthesis of amino phosphonase and asymmetric organocatalysis. Afterwards, he moved to Professor Susanna Harutunian's group at the University of Groningen, where he worked in copper-1 catalysis, and to Professor Alan Watson at the University of St. Andrews to work on the mechanism and applications of the quark. In late 2022, he obtained a postdoctoral fellowship from the Basque government, allowing him to spend two years within the group of Professor Oliver Kappe at the University of Graz before moving back to the University of the Basque Country, where he is currently working on independent projects related to the development and applications of recyclable chirocatalysts. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, Aito. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the kind introduction and welcome everyone to this series of episodes about asymmetric organocatalysis. Today, we will have an overview of key developments related to covalent organocatalysis, focusing on the reaction mechanism and illustrating their application through selected examples. To introduce asymmetric catalysis, we first need to define what a catalyst is. According to the UPAC, a catalyst is a compound that can increase the speed at which reactions occur, lowering the energy required for the reaction to take place. One of the key characteristics of a catalyst is that it is not consumed by the chemical reaction and can be reused in subsequent catalytic cycles. Therefore, catalysts are used in substoichiometric amounts. In the presence of a chiral catalyst, a prochiral reactant has different energy barriers to the air and the S enantiomers respectively, and the enantiselectivity of the reaction is related to the energy gap between both energy barriers. Asymmetric catalysis can be classified into three main groups. Metal catalysis consists of the combination of a metal atom with a chiral organic molecule known as a ligand. Despite the unique reactivity of metals, this type of catalyst tends to be highly moisture and oxygen sensitive, often requiring the use of a strict inert atmosphere. On the other hand, biocatalysis uses molecules such as enzymes. Enzymes are extremely specific allowing high enantiocontrol but lower tolerance to changes in the temperature, solvent, or pH. Finally, organocatalysis refers to the use of small organic molecules to achieve highly enantiselective reactions, allowing more versatile reaction conditions than methyls and enzymes. In recent years, the high potential of asymmetric organocatalysis was highlighted by the UPAC, including it in the top 10 emerging technologies in chemistry in 2019 and by the Royal Swedish Academy of Science through the Nobel Prize awarded to David Macmillan and Benjamin List in 2021. Many people also acknowledge Carlos Barba's contribution to antibody-mediated catalysis as one of the key precursors of asymmetric organocatalysis. As we will see in the following slides, in the late 90s, several authors contributed to what we know as asymmetric organocatalysis. In this episode, we will focus on selected examples in enamine and aluminium ion catalysis, n heterocyclic carbines, and phosphine organocatalysis. Regarding the enamine and aluminium ion catalysis, we will see the proline catalyzed and antiselective aldol reaction developed by List, the antiselective DL Salder reaction reported by Macmillan, and some examples of the application of the aryl silyl prolinols to the alpha functionalization of enolizable aldehydes reported by Jorgensen and Hayashi. For each of them, we will see the reaction mechanism focusing on the key step determining the stereoselectivity. One of the common aspects of this type of catalyst is the initial condensation of chiral secondary amines with a carbonyl group. In this case, the reaction of proline with a ketone forms a chiral enamine. Next, the carboxylic acid of proline activates a non-enolizable aldehyde through a hydrogen bonding favoring the rare phase attack of the enamine to the aldehyde. The subsequent hydrolysis of the aldol product releases the product and regenerates the catalyst. The same year least reported in antiselective aldol reaction, Macmillan published the development of first generation imidazolidinone organocatalyst and their application to the antiselective DL Salder reaction. In this case, the initial condensation with an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde forms the aluminium ion, which reacts with the diene to form two contiguous stereocenters. 
In this case, the selectivity of the reaction is sterically controlled by the benzyl group in the catalyst, and the reaction occurs through the less hindered phase. As in the previous case, the catalyst is regenerated by the hydrolysis of the aluminium ion. Another example of secondary amine organocatalyst are diaryl-cyrylprolinols. Their synthesis is based on the chiral diaryl-prolinol used for the CBS reduction, making it more convenient in many cases. The example shown in this slide was reported by Hayase in 2005. In this case, enolysable aldehydes are used as nucleophiles. The initial condensation forms the chiral enamine, which then reacts with an electrophile, in this case a nitroalkene. As in the case of Macmillan's organocatalyst, the enantioselectivity of the reaction is sterically controlled. This type of reaction allows the enantioselective alpha functionalization of enolysable aldehydes with several electrophiles. An illustrative example of the application of enamine organocatalysis was reported by Jorgensen in 2005. They reported the alpha functionalization of aldehydes with azo decarboxylates. In this case, when using proline as the catalyst, the stereoselectivity of the addition is directed through hydrogen bonding with the electrophile. In contrast, using diaryl-silylprolinols, it is controlled by steric effects, leading to the opposite enantiomer. Jorgensen Hayashi organocatalysts have also been broadly used in enantioselective additions to alpha, beta, and saturated aldehydes, showing in this case a similar reactivity to Macmillan's imidazolidinones. Moving to the next type of organocatalyst, we have enetrocyclic carbenes. In this case, although several attempts were made to achieve high enantioselectivity in the 70s and the 80s, it was not until 1996 that Enders reported the first highly enantioselective stator reaction, closely followed by Lippert's benzoin condensation in 1998. Enetrocyclic carbene organocatalysts are typically stored as triosolium salts. These precatalysts are in situ activated in the presence of a base. The initial step of many NHC catalyzed reactions involves the nucleophilic addition of an active NHC to aldehydes, leading to the Breslow intermediate. This intermediate allows unpolum processes with aldehydes, such as the intramolecular stator reaction reported by Enders, where the intramolecular 1,4 addition of the acyl anion is controlled by the steric effect of the chiral catalyst, being the C phase attack the preferred one. After the addition, an intramolecular hydrogen transfer occurs, from the ester enolate to the alcohol. Subsequently, an elimination releases the reaction product, regenerating the catalyst. The benzoin condensation reported by Lipper is highly interesting because of the new concept introduced. Previously reported, chiral NHC catalyzed reactions usually afforded limited enantiocontrol. The main reasons were the high flexibility of the chiral moiety and the broadly extended use of thiazole-derived NHCs. This work analyzed the effects of more rigid and sterically demanding thiazole-based NHCs. As shown in this slide, the rigid skeleton not only controls the major isomer of the Breslow intermediate, but also the preferred orientation of the electrophile in the addition step. Since then, bicyclic NHCs have dominated this type of organocatalysis, exploring cascade reactions and leading to more complex final products. This is the case of the enantioselective annulation reactions reported by Paul and Yi. Following the applications of bicyclic triazole NHCs, in 2006, Bode reported the acetyl salder reaction of alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes with conjugated imines. The isomerization of the Breslow intermediate forms the corresponding chiral azolium enolate. This enolate then undergoes an initial 1,4 addition to the imine, followed by an intramolecular cyclization, leading to the sex member lactam with two contiguous chiral stereocenters. Another method to access azolium enolates consists of the addition of NHCs to ketones. In 2008, Jay reported the enantioselective Staudinger cycloaddition. Similar to the previous case, once the azolium enolate is formed, the enantioselective addition to the imine is followed by the intramolecular addition of the nitrogen to the acyl azolium ion, 
releasing the chiral beta lactam product and regenerating the catalyst. Anetracyclic carbenes are often used in cascade reactions leading to complex structures with several contiguous stereocenters. An illustrative example was reported in 2008 by Vogue as a modification of the previous report. In this case, an ominolate is initially formed, inverting the polarity of the beta position to the aldehyde in an unpollum process. The ominolate undergoes the initial enantioselective 1 4 addition to the imine, forming the azolium enolate and the imine intermediates. Then the reaction continues as an intramolecular variant of the Staudinger cycle addition reported by J. First, the addition of the azolium enolate to the imine, followed by the addition of the nitrogen to the acyl azolium leading to a basic beta lactam with four contiguous stereocenters. The last part of this episode concerns phosphine catalyzed and antiselective reactions. Chiral phosphines are highly versatile as they can be found in many ligands and metal complexes. However, they also exhibit high reactivity in the absence of any metal. In asymmetric organocatalysis, they are mainly used in reactions involving alines or alkynes as reported by Zhang in the late 90s, and also in the Morita Bailey Hillman and closely related reactions. One of the most common phosphine catalyzed reactions is the 3 plus 2 annulation of alenoids with alkenes. In this context, Zhang reported in 1997 the enantioselective version of this reaction using a bicyclic chiral phosphine. The reaction starts with the nucleophilic addition of the phosphine to the aline, generating a chiral 1,3 switerion. Although two potential isomers of the addition product can be formed, the selectivity of the reaction is mainly controlled by the substrate, being the position next to the carboxylate the most nucleophilic one. Subsequent intramolecular addition of the former acrylic enolate led to the formation of the five-membered cycle. Finally, the phosphine catalyst is recovered through elimination, losing the first stereocenter formed in the reaction. A year later, the same group reported the application of these sweaterions in another enantioselective reaction. In this case, the sweaterion was formed through the addition of the phosphine catalyst to either alines or internal alkynes. In the presence of another nucleophile, such as the cyclic enolate shown in this slide, chiral sweaterions act as electrophiles leading to enantiomeric ketoesters bearing a tetrasubstituted stereocenter. Apart from the reactivity with alines and alkynes, phosphines are broadly used in Morita Bailey's Hillman and related reactions. In 2003, C reported an antiselective Morita Bailey's Hillman reaction with imines, using a vinyl derived chiral phosphine. The initial step of the reaction is the phosphamicyl addition to the ketone, forming an enolate. Then, the hydroxyl group of the catalyst activates the imine close to the enolate through hydrogen bonding. The addition through the C phase and subsequent elimination yields the chiral beta amino ketone. A similar strategy of bifunctional phosphine catalysis was used by Song in 2012. In this case, it was applied to the closely related Rahut Courier reaction, also known as the Vinylogus Morita Bailey's Hillman. As in the previous example, the initial step is the phosphamicyl addition. Then, the amide acts as the hydrogen donor activating the imine. After the product is released and the catalyst is regenerated, an intramolecular acamicyl addition forms the final tetrahydropyridine product. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you are interested in learning more, I would recommend you to check the selected articles and reviews. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them in the YouTube comments. Thank you for watching this episode and thank you to Aito for covering this special topic. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode and reach out with any comments or questions you might have. You can follow us on Twitter to stay up to date and I'll see you all next time.